everyone to another episode of the Adept is Ridiculous. Everything is as it should be this episode. I'm your host, DK Diamantes. Bricky is going to be doing the teaching. So all is the way that it should be. And gotta give a huge shout out to all of our Patreons over at patreon.com slash Ridiculous. You guys have absolutely annihilated the $4,000 goal. So at some point, we are going to get on cam, get absolutely smashed, and be reading Warhammer 40k fan fiction. So if you enjoy the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous and support the podcast. But today is a very exciting day because Bricky, this has been, this has probably been one of the most requested, I want to say, or people have been looking forward to this the most. I look, I've been looking forward to it a lot. It's the Adeptus Mechanicus. I am more than stoked for this episode. Uh, it is a really good day to be an AdMech fan. And I want to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But first, we had a thing we wanted to do before we started. Uh, there Ooh. is, of course, as of recently, a Warhammer game that has come out called Warhammer Mechanicus, and the mm -hmm. opening, like, title drop, I suppose was called, is very Mechanicus. It's probably one of the best lore-accurate <laughs> games they've done, and the opening is just, it gives you those, like, those, like, cool chills, those, like, shivers yeah, yeah. down your spine where you're like, oh, that's very badass. That's so... Cool. Good old, good old, the three of us are going to be watching it together because I don't, I do not believe you have seen it yet. I have many times, but you have not. <laughs> and for the listeners, you'll be able to listen to it. For the viewers, we will go ahead and have it on screen. But until then, are you ready, DK? Oh, yeah, let's go, dude. It's such that, a fucking good intro, man. It's that transition so when it was like, it was, woo, woo. it's so, I know it gets your loins going, man. It sure do. It sure do. Um, so many questions though that I'm assuming will be answered because so so that dude was just is he just like an AI in that skull? Whoa! And he, whoa! Whoa! Don't say Whoa. those cursed letters oh, ever again. That's right. That's right. 40K <laughs> world, they don't like those, do they? No, they don't. And we'll talk about why. Thing. We'll talk about why very soon, too. But um, but yes, I mean, at this point, he has eventually ended up to, as just a little skull. Uh, but that's okay, because <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, he was a Magos. And that w there's like a million ways to pronounce Magos, Magos, whatever. Magos. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck it's pronounced. But he has, uh, yeah, that's... He's got glory to the Omnissiah, man. He's already saved. It's oh. it's such a it's such a good title drop. The the soundtrack of that game is nothing but whirring engines and like pipe organs. It's pipe yeah. organ dubstep, and it's the best fucking thing I've ever heard. That's, I love that it. That is that is a hell of a hell of a hell of an introduction to the Mechanicus, though. Um, I know it's it. perfect. It is so yeah. lore accurate. But yeah, the now of the flesh. It's a time for AdMech. Th this is such a good moment to be an AdMech fan. And I don't just mean like, hey, you're watching the AdMech episode. Like, in general, <laughs> in Warhammer, AdMech right now are, because I believe in late 7th edition is when they got their first codex, which was called the Skatari. And then mm -hmm. in 8th, they eventually got their full Adeptus Mechanicus codex. And as of lately, they just got, like, like nine new models the the dudes Ooh. on the dogs came out like a year or so ago, maybe a little less. Um, the the big flyer, like Da Vinci looking flyer, is new. The uh -huh. dudes with the wings, that's new. They just got uh, shown a new Skatari like martial character. 
and that's coming out. The new Admech Codex is coming out in April, which is this month. Wow. That is the, the Mechanicus game is like the best 40k game ever made. I'd mm -hmm. honestly argue it's the best. Uh, you know, it may not have like the Dawn of War feel, but it's it's really good. Like, and also the Admech lore is probably one of the best lore uh, like pieces that that good old Games Workshop has done because they're a a fantastic culmination of that that like Tibetan monk vibe with the with the the incense and the robes and all the and all the oil combined with martian tech and, mm -hmm. and technophiles and a bunch of body horror and it, they're just religious cults bunch of body horror like from what little i know about the admech it is just all body horror and just mechanic limbs coming out the wazoo on the big important guys and and axes and rods and creepy crawly arms and giant laser cannons and oh i love the admech uh i i i actually have the 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 dog rider uh mini boys um i forget what they're called sarah uh, Cer cerberus raiders or like sulfur Ooh, hounds yeah. yeah 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 sulfur hounds that's right yeah Shy the, the, the dog Christmas. horses oh yeah she did get you those yeah that's right yeah I mean, the the dog horses with the with the they, they breathe like phosphor <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super dope. I've been waiting to paint them until like uh, we start doing those um, uh, monthly paint episode, whatever thingamaboobles. Uh, so I haven't painted them yet, but man, they're so fucking cool. I know. And that's another reason why being Admech right now is so great is because I don't know anybody, not even the most diehard anti-Imperium chaos worshippers that truly can look at Admech and be like, eh, they look okay. There's just, they're so cool. I mean, maybe if you don't like they the steampunk are. vibe, I guess, but just the the way, like, you look at the the higher tier people, like, Call and Tech Priest Dominus, and they, they have all this crap on them, but then, like, your foot mm -hmm. soldiers have those giant glowing eyes, and yep. the, the breathers, and they all have those oiled up robes, and... Well, yep. anyway, I'm, we're, I'm fanboying. We're both fanboying we're a little fanboying. bit. Hell yeah. Yeah. We, we need to talk, actually, about the Mechanicus. So let's do that. Let me let me pull up my notes right here. All right, get get after it cuz I'm excited. Right. Fans are excited. Let's fucking go. So Admech is the obviously the short version of saying Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh mm -hmm. what there's a couple really interesting things about Admech that I feel like are needed to be cleared up cuz when we talk about Admech, we're talking a lot or the things that people get mistaken is what is the machine god, who is the Omnissiah, uh, what mm. is like, why do they do their body augmentation? Things like that. A lot of them just think like, ah, flesh is stupid or whatever. But there's a lot more oh. that came from it. I, I'm, I'm definitely in that boat. I don't really know how it came to the point where they were like, oh, yeah, fuck flesh, robo stuff. I don't know shit about the Omnisaya uh, or machine spirits. I know like whenever they have... Uh, machinery, they're just like, ooh, that's probably functioned by a machine spirit. I don't know how to build it, though. Um, so, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in that boat. Good. That's good. It's a good thing you're here, then. Yeah. Um, so, prior to the Horus Heresy, there were two different names for the Mechanicus. So, do you remember when the Space Marines were originally known as, like, the Legio, the Space Marine Legions, and then they became chapters after? Yeah. It's because Every, everybody actually is you on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever, man. Um, <laughs> this one's a little bit more important, I, I would argue, though, because uh, Gilliman was like, all right, we got to do some fixes around here. Now they're the Adeptus Astartes. Before the Horus Heresy, they were known as the Mechanicum, the Mechanicum of Mars, or also known as the Cult Mechanicus. Okay. Uh, post or Cult Mechanicum, I think. But it's not important. Uh, post is when they became the Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, right. Though at the time prior, being the Mechanicum, what they were were a normal human colony on Mars. But they, like, this dates back to way back when. The moment Mr. Musk landed his fucking car on Mars, <laughs> that's when the Admech came around. And they terraformed the shit out of Mars. It was like a garden world of, like, trees and forests and, and, and rivers. It was lush. The atmosphere was breathable. You could walk around without a suit. They hard terraformed it. And during this, like, you know, huge population, it was really good. Manufacturing, sure. But then we had the Dark Age technology. 
which yeah. as you remember they built a bunch of robots you have your usual sci-fi the robots rise against bullshit you know we all have it uh yeah. then with that became a giant amount of horrible horrible death and destruction due to this war and then right following that the elves fucked slanesh arrived and then the <laughs> age of strife occurred oh boy and with, and with the age of strife don't go anywhere Everyone's stuck, and everyone's very upset. So what's the best thing to happen? The Civil War! Yay! Yay! Because basically Civil everywhere War. in the galaxy had Civil War because of that. Yeesh. Um, And so, specifically, Mars was particularly rough. Well, I don't know about that, because a lot of the planets just de straight up died. But they had yeah. a, a pretty hefty Civil War to the point where it completely destroyed their atmosphere. All of their terraforming Ooh. processes, all of their nice trees, they just rad bombed the surface and killed everyone. And now the surface of Mars is an irradiated Chernobyl-esque Martian red planet wasteland. It's back oh, to normal. Man. I, I was going to say, in 40K, it seems like radiation is always a problem. Somehow, whether, uh, you know, it's through a nuke or civil war uh, or something... Someone is always irradiating a planet to near inhospi inhospitability. Um, it's, it seems to be a favorite in 40k. And they did it again. Of course. They, they love it. So, naturally, with the surface being practically unlivable, they all went underground, obviously. Uh, the surface was covered in, obviously, the radiation problems, but also horrible, horrible mutants. Like, good old oh. super mutant level shit from Fallout, just roaming the entire wasteland, giant cults of these horrifying hunchback mutants. Mm -hmm. It was barely survivable. If the radiation didn't kill you, the, the winds, the rocks, or the mutants would. So those who lived underground specifically needed to work on some major facets to keep the populations alive for thousands of years. Like... 5,000 oh. years, the Age of Strife, right? Yeah, yeah. So there are a few individuals that were like, you know, your, your Joe Schmo mechanics, the guys who operate the life support systems, the water tanks, the, the right. food crop harvesters. These people were like revered because without the no these people's knowledge, without their ability to keep things like working, Mars would have gone extinct. Yeah, everything would have died out. Yeah, and so because of that, it kind of started developing this kind of underground culture. Because when you think about it, like, a hundred years of being trapped underground will fuck up anybody. Ten years will fuck up anybody. Five thousand oh, yeah. years of underground shenanigans. These people who were so good at fixing shit, they were, they were revered. They became the original first ever tech priests. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. It would make sense that the ones that literally keep your society running with uh, food, machines, and fixing everything would, yeah, that they'd, they'd rise up and be sort of the ones that are getting worshipped a little bit. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I get it. No, no different than when the emperor died in the, or quote unquote, died in the heresy and then everyone revered him as a god. Like, are you, how can you really stop them, all yeah. considering? Uh, but so as time went and they kind of started developing this little underground culture... And a little side note, the red robes they wear, they were actually originally viable. They were used for, like, camouflage on the red Martian surface. And also, you know, like, big Martian winds would be oh. nice to have a thing on to kind of block all the sand and crap. No different than, like, people who wear stuff in the Middle East and all, you know? I never thought about the fact that on the red planet of Mars, a red robe could act as camouflage. I yeah. thought they just did it because it looked cool. No, well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure they made it red first and then they retroactively made the lore, but it's still pretty cool. <laughs> You're probably right. But that is a that is a great little tidbit. Yeah, it's super neat. It's not just like the weird homina homina canticles. It's actually in, in the beginning. <laughs> there was a point block the wind, block the sand. And also, you know, you could hide with it yeah. past that. Uh, this created this like uh, cult mechanicus. So that's the main thing is the the cult of the mechanicum. I can't kiss whatever I don't care <laughs> um <laughs> they, they create like a fundamental religion by being stuck down here because I mean why can you really stop them why no. wouldn't they yeah so this is the number one most important thing to understand when it comes to the mechanicus 
They believe that the quest for knowledge is the true quest for divinity. Oh. It is all about knowledge. Everything involving the Mechanicus is about knowledge. And I'll and I'll tell you why soon. Because right. they believe that now originally underneath the surface of Mars was the uh Catan shard of the Void Dragon, which I think you remember that being the Necron oh. model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super cool. It's it's uh if I had any skills in painting, I would paint that up immediately because it's uh probably one of my favorite looking minis that I've seen to date. It's pretty fucking awesome. But uh, obviously with the Catan and the Necrons being so goddamn old, it was assumed that the cuz the Void Dragon's sheer existence fucks around with machines. He he his oh. he moves and like things go haywire and become static and it's the assumption that there was a shard of him or something of that nature deep, deep within the surface of Mars. And mm -hmm. that's why machines would start going on the fritz and being really weird. So oh, okay. that kind of gives the idea that there is a deity known as the machine god that permeates through all machines. And it's the oh. holder of all knowledge in the universe. So it's, it's kind of a weird thing because you ask the question like, is the void dragon the machine god? Well, yeah. not this. No, um, well, no. It's kind of the idea that, like, if someone, if if a uh, if a vase, like, if, if you said, "Oh God, please give me a sign that today will be a good day," and then like a vase randomly falls over because right, two rats because two rats were fucking next to the vase, like, yeah. are the are the rats God? No, but of course not. you know, it's just a happy coincidence that. So, does that mean that the machine god just straight up doesn't exist, and it's just the fuckery of this uh, Catan Void Dragon shard that made the Adeptus Mechanicus believe that there was a machine god? It's possibly. The problem is that this idea is so insane heresy, like heresy <laughs> to the nth degree. That's true, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> So I imagine it's one of those types of deals where it started off with the mentality that, okay, these things are on the fritz. There's obviously like a deity controlling them. And then it just became part of their established religion. You know, ah. you know, even, even if, even if something coincidental happens, you might attribute that to the work of, of a God or, or, or like, like a Catholic style, you know, the, the usual, right. Um, you miracle, might attribute it. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's a miracle. You might attribute that kind of thing to it. Uh, though, I guess there is a possible um, argument to be made that because similarly to how the sisters are able to use pure faith to make miracles happen, perhaps the the never-ending faith of the Mechanicus in the cult possibly makes some stuff happen. I, I don't okay. think I don't think it's supposed to be that way, but it makes logical sense, I think. All right. Um, because right. they still have souls, you know, they're not like they're not like Necrons. Yeah, yeah. So um, either way, that's the main creed is like the machine god is is a god. It's a god. Right. They believe it to be a god that it permeates through all machines, is the holder of all knowledge. Right. Uh tell me if I'm jumping the gun here a bit, but since we've mentioned the Void Dragon, uh the Shard, uh the Catan uh, machines. Uh, I'm assuming it's like, do the Necrons ever interact with the Adeptus Mechanicus? And like, how do they view each other? Because one are like uh, robots that kind of lost everything that was human about them, and then the Adeptus Mechanicus are humans that want to be robots, and they're kind of like they've got this weird parallel going. And I might be jumping again. You're probably gonna talk about them later, aren't you? No, it's actually a pretty good question because that's that's the number one thing that a lot of people ask about is. The, the question, like, how do the Mechanicum view the Necrons? Because obviously the Necrons are vastly more advanced than mm. the Mechanicus are. Um, there are a couple interesting things that they say. Uh, you, you know what? Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and give you a reading reading here. So basically, the there's a thing they have called I'll get back to the um Cold Mechanicus in just a second, but they have a mm. thing called the quest for knowledge. That's the ultimate quest. And the, it's the the concept that all knowledge already exists in the universe. It's already there. You oh. just need to find it. All right. And so there are, I believe, is it 16? 
Yes, there are 16 universal laws that faith in the cult are defined by, which are two separate sets of eight precepts, uh, known as the mysteries of the cult mechanicus and the warnings of the cult mechanicus. Uh, let me go ahead and read the, these to you, because this, this might answer your question in like an indirect right. way. The mysteries of the cult mechanicus are life is directed motion, and the spirit is the spark of life. Sentience is the ability to learn the value of knowledge, and intellect is the understanding of knowledge. Sentience is the basest form of intellect. Understanding is the true path to comprehension. Comprehension is the key to all things. The Omnissiah knows all and comprehends all. Now, that might sound like a whole bunch of fucking gibberish, but give the warnings of the cult mechanicus. The alien mechanism is a perversion of the true path. The soul is a con, uh, con conscience. Yes, conscience of sentience. A soul can be bestowed or bestowed. Sorry, only sorry. by the omnissiah. The soulless sentience. A soulless sentience is the enemy of all. The knowledge of the ancients stands beyond question. The machine spirit guards the knowledge of the ancients. Flesh is fallible, but ritual honors the machine spirit. To break with ritual is to break with faith. So that fourth one, the soulless sentience Ooh. is the enemy of all. Yeah. So as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, I guess they're not big fans. I no, big no, fans. no, no, no. Because they have no soul. And mm -hmm. the Amnesia... Um, and the machine god, the idea of like a sentience is the ability to learn the value of knowledge and a soul is the conscience of sentience. Yep. And that's why they say like, you know, the machine spirit guards the knowledge, flesh is fallible, but ritual honors the machine spirit. So if you don't do your rituals, you therefore are breaking your faith. And that's heresy. Right. Right. So, they, so it, have they ever met? And I, since I'm assuming they, the ad mech would probably then fucking hate the necron um since i mean but if they have a shard of the void dragon certainly at some point the necrons are going to want that back well maybe the the, the void dragon's kind of a piece of shit <laughs> um <laughs> he's an ass he's uh a fucker uh but there is it, it depends like in the for instance the mechanicus game the whole point is that the mechanicus vessel found a tomb world and that's the whole point of the game. Oh, right. Um, so on one hand, they all view the aliens as, as disgusting. But mm -hmm. Mechanicus being fucking nerds are very, one of them is very much like, ooh, ooh, need more data, need more tech, need to learn, yeah. learn, learn, and learn. And the other ones are like, you you can't, you fuck you. That's yeah, that's the other ones are like, shit, dude. The other ones are like, burn them to the ground, burn it all, burn the incense. Come on, we got it. This is horrible. Let's get out of here. <laughs> so sometimes the mechanicus have two mindsets on things. Um, gotcha. Because if you think about it, on one hand, well, that's Zeno's perversion. The alien is not, you know, worth their time. But on the other hand, if all knowledge already exists in the universe, could this be it? Mm. So there's a slight bit of that issue of, of figuring that kind of stuff out. Yeah. Um, but besides that, uh, there's one big thing that I do want to clear up because it's very important. The Omnissiah. Yeah. Ah, the machine yes. god and the Omnissiah are not the same thing. Oh, really? I, I just kind of thought they were. Uh, A lot I of people the, did think that. Yeah, I thought it was Omnissiah, parenthesis, the machine spirit slash god. I, ooh. No, so the machine god is their god. The Omnissiah, they believe to be the prophet of said god. Because he's the messiah of the machine. Oh, it makes so much sense now. The wordplay. Oh my so, god, I never picked up on the wordplay. I feel so stupid. I've been living in a fool's paradise. <laughs> living in a fool's paradise sounds great in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> but the the true goal of the mechanicus is to comprehend the glory and the nature of the machine god and the omnissiah if the machine god is let's say allah the omnissiah is muhammad if the machine right. god is god the omnissiah is jesus He's jesus the mechanicus believe that the that the omnissiah is the emperor Oh, okay. 
Yes. All right. The the emperor is the omniscient. He is the the prophet of the machine god. Whereas the rest of the Imperium deems the emperor to be a god, they deem him as the prophet of the machine god. Uh, okay. Which is why well, they sometimes clash a little with their ideas. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little yeah. bit, a little tad. Um, so that, that's the major thing to understand about Admech is that the Machine God is a god, the Omnissiah is the prophet, generally assumed to be the emperor, and knowledge is the most important. Now, I mean, there's a lot of things that went on in terms of what happened with the Mechanicus. Uh, there's, like, long story short, Horus Heresy happened. About half the Mechanicus, or Mechanicum at the time, whatever, uh, went, went traitor. They all fought, obviously, the Loyalist won. Um, mm -hmm. There were lots of actually really intricate and, and interesting ideas, like how one of the uh, Mechanicus ladies was uh, this whole idea of learning how to invent and bettering their race, and mm -hmm. they were they, and they specifically were not interested in faith or, or you know creed, and so the I think the heretic one was like, aha, a heretic, we can fight you now, <laughs> and, and so he used it like to his advantage. There's a lot of there's actually a very intricate story in there. Uh, but this is the kind of overarching episode on the Mechanicus. Right, right. So it's a little hard to get too deep into that. And if I'm being totally honest, I don't know all of it myself. I have to do more research on that. But yeah, Schism yeah. of Mars probably is better to do later on. There's a, There are probably just as much lore on the Mechanicus fighting each other as there are on the, the damn um, Horus Heresy. There's, there's a lot. Oh, wow. There's a, quite a bit. But I mean, um, they were they were kind of born from civil war, weren't they? So I guess it's kind of on brand for them to fight each other. They do like it, and the dark mechanicists are pretty nutty. Um, though oh, because the mechanicists have that like quest for knowledge, everything is already exists in the universe. There, there's a slight. The interesting thing about I like about the mechanicists a lot is they're hypocrites. <laughs> they're they're horrible hypocrites. All right. Because to invent. To create new technology is heresy. But if you oh. find if you find technology from the old dark age of man, that's okay. And you can use that as much as you'd like. If huh. something if something breaks, it must be rebuilt or repaired following the rituals to do so. If you do not know how to do it, then it won't be repaired. You want to know one of my favorite stupid fucking stories? About Admech? Yes, I do. Yes, okay. I do. Okay. So there's this specific unit called the Sindonian Dragoons. They look like little chicken walkers, right? Okay. And, and they look pretty cool. There's like a melee or a shooting variant on the tabletop. And what happened is the dude who created them or found them via like an STC fragment, these awesome chicken walkers, he unfortunately died. <gasps> and he was oh. the only one who knew how to repair <laughs> these. So they're so fucking terrified of turning them off. They keep them on forever on like a treadmill <laughs> in a little loop. And they run around in a little loop forever until they need them. And then they fucking like lasso them and corral and get on top of them. And they ride them into battle. <laughs> So they just have them on like this, essentially this giant hamster wheel. Yeah. For all time until like, yo, we need one of those chicken walkers for battle. Get him out of the hamster wheel, you know? And then they just lasso them. <laughs> Cause nobody else knows how to build them or repair them or anything. Nope, the, no, no one knows. Only one guy knew. <laughs> but it's not just the fact, but it's, they're not like damaged. They just don't want to turn them off because they're scared they'll never turn on again because they don't oh know the ritual god. to like <laughs> sanctify the machine spirit. Oh my god, that's that's crazy. Uh, so how how often does stuff like that happen? Like where there's only one person that knows how something works, and then maybe they die in battle or something or whatever. Because I imagine not too many uh, adeptus mechanicus die of old age um, no. with the whole machine thing um, and no flesh. Um, but like how much technology, like, did they just like, oh yeah, there's only one guy that knows how to make it. He died. Fuck it. I guess we're not using that anymore. What a wonderful question and how perfectly it segues. Thanks, Dean Kamen. It was directly, directly into the, uh, mentality of the Mechanicus. They believe that human life holds zero value. <laughs> the, a, a human, a human life is 
worthless. It is is less useful than the dirt they step on, which Holy is why shit. they have no, absolutely no moral qualms in lobotomizing and turning into servitude billions of servitors and oh. and, and <laughs> slaves and and criminals and just turning them into whatever they want, like grunt work. They have no moral qualms because knowledge is the only thing that matters and knowledge must be preserved at all costs. The reason they strip their flesh and they remove their organs and innards is because if they have knowledge, if they have understanding, they don't want it to go away. So whatever extends their life or makes them tankier, tougher and like battle better at, at understanding and gaining this knowledge, they'll gladly strip their bodies of all kinds of flesh to be able to keep that going because oh, okay. knowledge is the only thing that matters. If you like, they'll gladly grab a million criminals, like mind wipe them, lobotomize them, graft a bunch of bullshit on their limbs and use them for slave labor. And they're like, eh, but a tech priest hmm. who understands how things work will try to survive by grafting other crap on his skin and body for thousands of years because the quest for knowledge is eternal. Wow. So they actually really don't lose much knowledge because they're always like, I guess they're always like grafting new shit onto themselves and extending their lives. So I, I, I guess they never really, aside from the chicken walker dude, I mean, yeah. it probably doesn't happen that often, right? The problem is that, like, obviously they can they can share their knowledge. They can, like, upload their knowledge to vast databanks and stuff. The mm -hmm. problem is that, one, AI is heresy. And two, <laughs> a lot of these people, or a lot of these, like, uh, Mechanicus guys, like, they understand that each human individual is, like, a carrier of their own knowledge. And to an extent, a dead tech priest is a, is a big loss. Oh, yeah. That'd be huge. That's thousands of years of knowledge and whatever lost, right? Yeah, and even though they might be able to, say, upload it to a databank or something like that, they're not always putting in the exact same spot. A lot of them are, but, you know, like a tech priest might be out in the fringes of space doing shit, and then he goes into the warp with his ship, and then he gets, like, butt-fucked by demons, you know? And, like, <laughs> that's that's a serious loss. He, he better attach a servo arm and get a big axe on his hands so he can get rid of them. <laughs> Those demons, man. You gotta watch those, out for them. Those demons. Damn elves. So the 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 servitors, the those are like the flying skull things. I, I vaguely remember that from the Mechanicus game. They're like little right. flying like those are just like humans that were lobotomized and So the the flying skull is called a servo skull. Ah, um okay. and yes, there is a human brain in there, and yes, that is a human skull, and yes, they've been mind wiped. Uh, lobotomized and uh, now in eternal servitude. A servitor cool. is a full body. Imagine it like, um, imagine like you took a normal human being and then you lobotomized them and you gave them like a big metal arm and now they do grunt work. Now they're like, they look like they act like zombies. Oh. But they just, they, they'll move around and be like, servitor, close my door. And they'll be like, yes, ma'am, they'll close your door. Oh, jeez. I mean, I Sometimes guess they carry not... guns and stuff, but eh. Ugh, oh boy, that's 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 brutal. Uh, but I guess in the Mechanicus eye, it's oh, it's whatever. They're, they were they were just humans that had no value. At least now they're helping us. Well, yeah, because now they're up. serving they're serving the Omnissiah because they are now assisting in the quest for knowledge. There is no no greater way to die. But that's the thing is because obviously we all remember that AI nearly killed the entire human race, right? So yes. obviously AI is big, big, big heresy. Mm -hmm. So instead of having AI, they just turn regular humans into walking, drooling servants. Oh, Why boy. create an AI robot when instead you can just have a whole bunch of people who have no intrinsic value because you don't believe humans have value and just use them as slaves? Ooh wee that's They're not uh, the Mechanicus aren't good people. <laughs> They're well, very bad. <laughs> this is this is true, but who is good in 40k? Like there's no good guys. Everybody is just varying degrees of fucked up. The uh servo skulls and servitors are very fucked up though. That is yikes, dude. That's <laughs> Yeah, they they <laughs> they like to do a lot of that stuff. And they also maintain a large amount of the stuff for everyone else like 
uh, whenever the Sisters of Battle want to stick somebody on the pain engines, the penitent engines, they call upon the Mechanicus. Um, yeah, I, I forgot about, about Cherubs. Remember Cherubs? Shy is a Cherub. She has the little wings and she's and stuff, you know? Oh, yeah, uh, the little babies yeah. with the skull on them or something? Yeah, they're lobotomized. They're, they're fucking children that have been lobotomized, mind wiped, had a bunch of shit stuffed in them of like, oh. and, and given angel wings and they, and their entire purpose is to carry incense to bless like a fucking tank. Oh, I see. That's, uh, yeah. that's pretty. The sisters so love these things. They carry them everywhere. They carry their <laughs> ammo. They carry their incense. They carry scripture. Oh, geez. So wait, they, are you telling me they like lo they actually like lobotomize babies? Oh yeah, they don't give a shit. Humans have no intrinsic value. Just because it's small uh, doesn't mean crap to them. Uh, I, I I suppose that's true. I suppose that's true yeah. for the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. They don't care about human life. It's stupid. You fleshynoids are you're dumb. Yeah. Be, be decorative angels for us with your dumb fleshy babies. Oh boy. I, I mean, sometimes <laughs> sometimes they're vat grown. Actually, I think a lot of times the cherubs are vat grown because it's a lot quicker than ah, having well, to wait makes, nine months. <laughs> that makes it, that makes it so much better. My conscience is. is oh yes, is you're clean. It's clean yeah. now. We don't yeah, need to worry now, anymore. Now we're okay as long as they're vat grown. That is <laughs> only in 40k can you have this unironic conversation. <laughs> I know. Only it's... in 40k. <laughs> Good old the humanity the ain't great. <laughs> humanity ain't great. Nope. Um, nope. But so, so really, when it comes down to it, you know, preservation of knowledge. Make sure that everybody knows exactly that, you know, the idea that you cr you graft your, your limbs off, you, you take out a heart, you, you remove a lung in, in order to make sure you live longer or you are better at dealing with enemies. Which is actually kind of a cool idea because we can talk a little bit about Forge Worlds and the Skotari. Um, okay. A Forge World, in case you don't know, is basically an entire world entirely dedicated to the manufacturing of, of stuff. Because, as I think you remember from the Great Crusade, the Emperor and the Mechanicus signed like a, like a, a pact, right? Like, yeah. hey, you guys can believe in whatever you want. You can believe in your Mechanicus or cult and all that crap. But, you know, instead, make shit for me. Right. And so these Forge Worlds are gigantic, full-sized, like, planets that are entirely dedicated to the manufacturing of arms. Uh, this okay. is everything from the Space Marines' bolters and armor to tanks to the, the humble LAS gun. And <laughs> interestingly enough, light. depending on what thing, like, because they believe everything has a machine spirit, right? Sure. They, which, to them, is the concept that every single machine... Of any piece of tech has a a deity inside of it, almost like, like something that needs to be appeased. So you take like a las gun maybe, and the guardsman before battle he'll like take a little a little bead of incense on his hands, and he'll just like say a very quick like little pray or prayer over the las gun, and that's it. He has appeased the machine spirit. His gun will now work properly. <laughs> uh, but if you take like a titan. Or like like a Imperial Knight or some of those gigantic Mechanicus shit. There, yeah. There's like 400 of them chanting canticles. Like the incense clouds the sky. You know, they're all rubbing oil on their robes. And like for like seven days, they're just like homina, 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 homina. Wow. Like nonstop because they, that's a big machine spirit. You better yeah. appease it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot, especially uh, since apparently, you know. I don't know. I was gonna say like all this started from uh, some shit that the Void Dragon shard just kind of bloop 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 bloop, and now you gotta pray for seven days for the Titan. Well, some people assume that the Emperor was just a bunch of shamans killing themselves, and so in a sense, you know, small things got a butterfly effect, you know. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. There's a couple pretty cool Forge worlds. You obviously have Mars. Uh, you have Ryza which is the furnace of shackled stars where that got absolutely fucked during the Horus heresy because the Mars was like, Hey, Hey, Ryza, bitch. <laughs> and, and, and they were kind of jealous of how good Ryza was. So they, they mm -hmm. bombed into the stone age. Uh, you have, are. what else? You've got Gria, which is really cool. Uh, it is a, Gria is really interesting. It is like a whole bunch of crazy space stations that crest around the planet. 
Uh, Metallica oh. is pretty awesome. This is an almost entirely metal planet. Uh, it, which wait, is did you say this this planet was called Metallica? Metallica, M E T A L I C A. Metallica. All right, all right. Yeah, it is almost an entire planet, fully surrounded by metal. It is deep, it, like it's entirely made of metal. There is no rocky crust. There's no plants. There's no animals. There's barely even a goddamn atmosphere, and it's situated right next to a whole bunch of orcs. Oh, <laughs> well, good thing it's made of metal. Uh, yep. Man, I gotta tell you, this whole time I was trying to think of a way to 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 get a Metallica song reference in there, but I'm just I I I'm not clever enough for it. I wish I knew Metallica better in order to make said reference. Like uh, like a, there's got to be like a Master of Puppets reference that we can do with the, like the Mechanicus and the. I don't know. It, I got, I got nothing, man. I'm sorry. I got, yeah, I, I got nothing either, man. I really wanted it to happen, but sorry. Yeah, guys. you got all those boomers out there that are just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Metallica. <laughs> Metallica. So, you know how you make Metallica fans mad? What's that? You, you tell them that St. Anger is the best Metallica album. Is it, is it not very good? It's really bad. Okay. I don't know these things. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Keep talking about the Adeptus Mechanicus. They're dope. Uh, Adeptus Metallica is uh, pretty cool. <laughs> um, so there is another thing that they have that's, that you'll see pretty often. Uh, these are known as the Scutari. And the Scutari are kind of like... Imagine the Mechanicus are, are your gigantic billionaire fucking Amazon, Elon Musk, SpaceX company. This uh -huh. is their private army. Um, the Metallica oh. is what you tend to see, or the Metallica, damn it. The Skatari is what you pretend <laughs> you, you tend to see are uh, the guys you'll see like on the battlefield. It's the it's the minis you'll take. They have like the big bright eyes and the rebreathers on. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the main one. Uh, this is a pretty funny thing. It says, quote, the odds of success are approximately 3,752 to 1. As the Omnissiah wills, I shall find a way. Zila Delta before her heroic defense at the Anvil Chem plant. Oh, shit. <laughs> the, there's a lot of these of these like Skatari dudes and their whole point is that they're kind of how you say they're not quite servitors they still have some decent higher brain function but oh. they're a little creepy because they're like less than human but significantly more effective uh they like they'll they'll walk like they don't even sleep because they believe that the incantations of the Omnissiah are sleep enough and as the, I, I know, and as they like walk with their with their galvanic rifles and and one of my favorite weapon names of all time, the trans uranic arc bus, um, <laughs> which is a gigantic sniper rifle that has a, a singular monopod at the end. And it's like double the height of the dude. Wow. It's it's super cool. But they take all these <laughs> weapons and as they like move and walk forward, the moment they arrive into battle, they don't slow down and they don't speed up. But instead, a tech priest from like orbit will immediately send signals through all of their their like nano machines and mind crap all over their brain, and they'll all just immediately shoulder their weapons and just start firing, almost like Necrons, with just like oh. the immediate uh, the immediate like firing to the immediate like battle. It's super Man. cool. That does sound dope. And um. the uh, obviously their looks are are very very cool. They have lots of interesting ways they're. Uh, how how they're like built and made. Like once they reach a certain level of like creation, mm -hmm. the, I think it's called the crux mechanicus is the point in which their body is more machine than flesh. They become right. like the leaders, like the sergeants and crap. Um, ah, that would make sense. Sure. There's some really cool ones like the Sicarian rust stalkers, which I think Shai just posted a picture of. They have these giant claws oh, shit. and blades. I Those guys are funny. Uh, in in game right now they're a little bit meh. I wonder if the, I hope the codex will give them something. But mm -hmm. in lore, their blades. This is the this is the most batshit stupid thing I think I've ever read in 40k. <laughs> their blades are are so sharp and powerful that when they swing, they hone in to the frequency of like the sound waves and atoms of the enemy's armor and slice between the mole the molecules at a molecular level to cut through power armor. It's, oh wow! That it's is... the stupidest bullshit ever, but it's so fun. 
<laughs> so the blade resonates at the same frequency of the armor on a molecular level, and that's how it slices through it. Let's see. Let's see. Sakarian Rust Stalker. Uh, let, let's let's find out. I'm curious. War gear. Here it is. Trans uh, Transonic Razor. A transonic razor emits a low, insistent buzz that makes stomachs turn and eyes vibrate in their sockets. When they strike <laughs> armor, these weapons will adjust their hostile sonic field to match the armor's resonate resonant frequency, quickly slicing right through it. Hostile sonic field is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hostile oh, oh, sonic field. They have their claw too. The tr uh, the transonic weapon in the form of a needle fingered gauntlet capable of turning a man's muscle, bone, and fat into jelly. Oh no! Oh Jesus! These rust stalkers are bad motherfuckers. Holy shit! I I, I mean, this is like if I'm being totally honest, this is like barely even. Barely even the crazy shit. Like, oh this is just some God. of the melee weapons. Let me find some, like, arc weapons. Um, <laughs> ra ra uh, here we go. Radium weapons. Um, let's see. As dangerous they are the, to their wielders, radium weapons are far more deadly. The enemy armor may repel the solid rounds, but only the most heavily reinforced battle plate can protect the target from the baleful energy given off by hyper-irradiated bullets. As the oh. more shots are fired, the area becomes increasingly saturated with radiation until a localized rad storm occurs, striking oh. down the enemy with radiation sickness and leaving the ground beneath their feet saturated and lifeless. Oh my They're so God. volatile that they will eventually kill their wielders. Holy shit! So that that's that's a radiation gun that not only makes a radiation storm, but it also fucks up whoever fires it. Yep. Oh, jeez. They have like <laughs> white phosphorus weapons. Oh um, no, I've played Spec Ops the line. Yeah, you have. I don't, I don't like phosphorus weapons like that. That's mm -mm, nope. <laughs> I, I was gonna say so, like you said, this the the soldiers weren't technically servitors but do they get created the same way did they just take like humans and then just brain wipe and you're a soldier now or are they well, just is... like adeptus mechanicus people that were robots and were like i want to fight now or how exactly do like do they make their dudes their their soldiers often they're either born like normal or they're vat grown sometimes because uh, sometimes oh, okay. humans are just vat grown just for the sake of it <laughs> yeah. um but often uh, they're just they're just kind of servants of the Omnissiah. I know uh, in the composition they kind of make their way up to slowly kind of adjust their brain function and body. You know, metal limbs, metal legs, having their in their internal body a little bit more adjusted, and their brain waves change. So they're they're, they're it's the idea that like these guys are half man, half machine. Their yeah. minds are are a lot less dulled, or a lot more dulled than the average person but they're able to kind of move and take orders at a electronic level, almost like Necrons right. can. Okay. Um, Cause yeah, you wouldn't want to send in like a tech priest. That's like, Oh yeah, he's, he's got the knowledge of like so many of our civilizations inner workings. You don't necessarily want to send him into battle and have him potentially get fucking killed and lose all that information. <laughs> oh, I mean, they do send tech priests to battle quite often, but they just don't make up the bulk of the army. They make up like the leaders. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. So like they'll have like the tech priest Dominus and stuff. Sometimes they just really want that new data, so they'll, they'll go on the battle with it in order to do it. Gotcha. Um, okay. Oh, I'll, let me tell you a few things about the composition of a Skatari, and then uh, I'll read the what thing that Shai said us or told us. All right. Um, the Skatari have their eyelids removed upon inception, for they oh. must harvest data for their masters at all times, and to prevent them from losing their sight. The goggle-like augments are filled with blessed salves and are sealed into place. So they are always, like, eyes wide open, so they never have a moment where they might lose data. That um, sounds like a nightmare, but okay. <laughs> they filter air into their, into their uh, lungs via rebreather tubes that plunge into their mouths down directly into their chest. And sometimes Ooh. they can draw upon a reservoir of polluted gases from their homeworld. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds awful. When you when you said body horror, you were not fucking around. 
Oh, yeah, like, you played Mass Effect 2, right? Yes. Do you remember the Overlord DLC? It was the Vaguely. it was the the um the guy whose autistic brother was used as like a conduit for the Geth. Oh God, that's right. Like I remember, he had like all these fucking things shoved in his arms. He had like tubes down yeah, his throat and crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's yeah. just normal oh. Skatari stuff. They have like forty wires going down their throat into their various organs, so it can be controlled in a different way. It, okay, you've lived with a laptop your whole life, and someone just gave you a dual PC set up with three monitors. The cord management is what they look like, just naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking terrible. <laughs> the cord Hey, some people out there have good cord management, all right? Not when you've lived with a laptop your whole life. You don't know what oh, the hell's true. going that's on. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> that's true. The wires are going fucking everywhere. What's going on? They don't, oh, they don't get shit. Uh, so, okay, so here's uh, here's what Shai said. The, uh, an owner Gradoon crawler is an Imperial combat walker, utilized exclusively by the Warriors, the Skartari Legions, and Death's Mechanicus. Um, decimate their foes to you know, get battlefield information. Various armaments are blasted apart. Squadrons of aircraft punch through holes of traitor battle engines or atomize enemy commanders in beams of blinding blue light. Its gunner is the Skatari Ranger. His formidable marksmanship bolstered by a variety of auto scryer lenses. And the machine's driver is the Skatari Vanguard. His resilience to harmful energies allowing him to immerse himself at, in an electro amniotic tank. That allows communication with the Onager's machine, uh, machine spirit. Such crewmen will eventually be used up in the manner of energy batteries, but these drivers are easily replaced by inserting a new vanguard into the filthy electrode rich soup. Oh. Or electrode rich soup, the Onager can be given a new lease of life. The Skatari crewmen meet their fate uncomplainingly. To serve the machine god is reward enough. They're like fucking oh, batteries. I'm just God. imagining them like driving the dune crawler. And they're like, oh, I think it's out of batteries. You just pull the dudes like husk out. You throw them away. And you throw like, another Bob, one in. <laughs> Bob, get in there. And he's like, by the Omnissiah wills it. And he just jumps in the fucking <laughs> vat. <laughs> I, for some reason, when, when we were talking about this and, uh, you know, after you pull the old crew hut and you're like, Bob, get in there. I just imagine going, okay, sir. And then just like doing like a, uh, uh, just a face first front dive in there, like <laughs> off the <laughs> diving board. Just like, okay, Bob. And then just head first right in there. I'm and that, so that's happy more of, for the Omnissiah. That's more of a Kriegsman thing. I think this guy, this guy will just like already be there. Because he was given like a mental a mental note through the, the tech true. priest. It's like by the Omnissiah wills it, I will become a battery. Goodbye. I mean, these dune crawlers must be real important. And I mean, it, it definitely sounds like they can really fuck some shit up, but you are literally killing uh your own troops with it. So I mean oh, this thing is. Dude, human be... life has no value. Well, oh, oh wait. But they're like, aren't the aren't the pilots Skatari Rangers and Vanguard? Not, does well, so long so long as they serve the Omnissiah? Well, yeah, I suppose. Skatari don't have much knowledge. They're they're just that's they're true. they're troops, you know. That, that's fair. Yeah. Um, a couple. Uh, so we're all like really far into this episode, and I still have a lot I want to talk about, and I ain't stopping. So I hope you guys are ready, um, because <laughs> Admech is fucking awesome. Uh, I want to talk about something that I didn't mention earlier about STCs, because this uh -huh. is pretty important. Um, so an STC is known as a standard template construct. Do you ever play Subnautica? Uh, I'm afraid this has got to be the meme of, nope, I didn't, I didn't. Damn it, I was about to say, here comes Bricky asking if DK's played a video game. <laughs> did, did you ever watch Star Trek? Of course I watched Star Trek. I'm a big nerd. Did you watch the uh, Star Trek TNG? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen much of it yet. I kind of want to get into it because uh, a, a movie reviewer I watch called Red Letter Media like it quite a bit. And I'm kind of like oh, invested yeah. now. I'm I, very curious. I, every time they talk about it, I'm just like, yep, auto click. Yep, I'm, I'm going I'm to spend the next two hours watching this. Yeah, you know, God damn it, Mike. Poor Jay. He doesn't deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway, a side note. Um, so, you know, in Star Trek, they kind of had that thing where you could take two sticks and a rock and turn it into a smoothie. In those like oh yeah yeah uh, in, in the, like the replicators or whatever yeah so an STC is in is the standard template construct which is the concept that it had a whole bunch of knowledge and understanding of fabrication from the dark age of technology from way back during oh. when everything was horrible and so they would take that STC which in a sense is also kind of like 
a kind of like a war mind and destiny. It's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. It's basically Oof. all the knowledge and it's a fabricator while being a, a very intelligent AI. Oh, very, boy. very intelligent AI. And so, you know, you would send it to a colony in God knows how far away. And this thing would have all the knowledge to be able to take the resources on the planet, turn it to its literal atoms, and then create whatever the hell you need. Um, oh, well, that's helpful. This is the biggest source of importance to the Mechanicus because they do not invent. Invention is heresy. Finding mm -hmm. the, the glory of yesteryear, finding the STCs is of utmost importance. It is their primary goal is to find more STCs. That makes sense. That it makes is like, it's num it's number one. It it's is like, there's like their Holy grail, right? It is literally the Holy grail. Two guardsmen once found an STC and the STC had the blueprints for an extremely powerful combat knife that was then given to all space Marines. The two guardsmen were like, like given a planet, like, here you go, live your life Ooh. out in luxury. Like they, they, it's literally the greatest find. It's how they've got the Land Raider, the the Bane Blade. Anything can be found from that. But that's the funny thing, right? Is that if you were to find an STC, you'd be rewarded for life. You would be treated like a winner of the Hunger Games. If you were to create an STC, you would get a bolt under the head. Oh well, that that makes sense because you're not supposed to invent shit, but you can find yeah. one, and that's okay. But if you invent one. Mm -mm -mm, you're the worst kind of heretic. The quest um, for knowledge is too important. So each of these STCs has like a different schematic or a different like source of knowledge in it. It's not just um, because you said so they're like the AIs same. that have like a ton of uh, information in them, right? So shouldn't they be able to just like make anything? Well, not anything. But the thing is, is like they're trying to find. Well, a lot of them, considering the fact that it's God knows how many years later, not all of them are intact. A lot of ah. them are, are broken or busted. Right, sure. That but, makes sense. It's been a while since the dark age of technology, so. Yes, but the they tend to have things, like, every so often. Like, you know, an STC might have 99% stuff you already know how to make, but it might have a fancy-pantsy tank or right? a new gun, okay. and then they can start making it, which is why Belisarius' call is not liked very well. Uh-oh. Because call Arch Magos, whatever the hell, um, <laughs> the the, num the number one spot is called the Fabricator General. That's like the main guy. Mm -hmm. Call for one is fucking enormous. <laughs> um, I have seen his mini. He 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 is a fucking. It's it's a great mini. Um, but whew, boy, he is so fucking cool. All right, so this is an image I really like about, um, you know, Bobby G, our good man, Roboot Gulliman, good old Primark Village Marines. Mm -hmm. Well, he came back alive and he has like ultra depression, but there's this great image of him at the post part of Cadia. And there's a lot of people there. You can see like the Eldar uh, Lady of Rain and stuff. But look mm -hmm. to the right. That's Call. Gilliman Whoa. is like a 10 foot tall Primark. <laughs> and like Call is just there. <laughs> Like towering over him, yeah, and and he's haunched over too. Like he, if, if he stood up straight, he wouldn't fit in that picture. No, he would. No, he would not. Absolutely he would, not. He would tower over the throne that Gilliman he, is sitting in. Here, here's a book cover. That's a full-on space marine next to him. Oh wow, he is gigantic. <laughs> he dwarfs that space marine. <laughs> So Call, oh Call is Arch Magos Belisarius Call. Call is has been alive since the Horus Heresy. Oh, he's an old boy. He is so fucking old. He is also batshit insane <laughs> because he's wiped his memory a couple times, his oh. own memory, and he's done all this shenanigans, but he was the one who created the Primaris Space Marines, which a lot of people in the tabletop are annoyed with because they're, like, kind of phasing out the old Space Marines. But basically, it's a bunch oh. of Space Marines that are just better in almost every way. But that means you, you invented. <laughs> that does it, mean you invented. Yeah, yep. yeah. You made Cole a really likes, great Space Marine, but heresy. 
Call really likes to invent. He likes to push forward. He is, in a sense, besides the fact that he's absolutely insane, <laughs> he is very intelligent, and his ability to create more is super important. And the, being able to, like, go that far and being able to be like, okay, I'm going to start working on stuff to better the Imperium because Gilliman's kind of in the same boat. He's like, yeah, make some shit. Like, mm -hmm. I've returned to this horrible, horrible world. Like, my Imperium is dying. What the hell? Make but Call, <laughs> Call has a couple things that make him a little scary, particularly the fact that he has a thing he gave to Gilliman called the Call Inferior. And the Call Inferior is basically like this little machine that has some pre-recorded responses. So if he ever needs to, if Gilman ever needs to ask Call a question, he can, the machine will like tell him a, a pre-recorded statement, right? Oh, okay. Um, the machine has sometimes gotten emotional <laughs> and sometimes outright lied to Gilliman. Oh. And Gilliman's like, Call, is this an AI? <laughs> And being calls no. like, no, nah, man, no, there's a, there's a human brain in there. What are you talking about? This, no, it's fine. We, we, there it is right there. It's not an AI. It's a, what are you talking about? <laughs> I never do that. Yeah, come on. We're buddies. I would never. What? AI? No. No, it's, it's simple. No. I, I'd yeah. never make an AI. Oh, wait, so, dude. It's totally an AI, isn't it? <laughs> a, most likely. So, so Call wants to become the Lord Fabricator of Mars, the Fabricator General. Uh, -huh. uh, and, and Gilliman is like, I don't trust you at all. <laughs> like I, we're working together and it's important, but I do not trust you. And if I made you Lord Fabricator, Mars would go into civil war cause they hate you. Yeah. I, I think uh, that's a smart move on Gilliman's part. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty nuts. Call right now is a really important character. He was there at the fall of Cadia. He revived Gilliman. He created the Primaris Space Marines. He's off doing God knows what now. And <laughs> overall, Call is a pretty, pretty crazy guy. Um, now, I screenshotted this on my phone because okay. this is, uh, this is a bit of a spoiler for one of the books. Let me go ahead and find it. Uh, okay. I believe it is from a, the book called... Uh, it's it's a space Hulk, I think. I, I'm trying to remember the name of the vessel. Death of Integrity is what it's called. Um, a space Hulk is basically a whole bunch of ships that went into the warp, and the warp caused them to like fuse together and become a giant amalgamation of bullshit, and then it's back in real oh. space. Oh, 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 God. That sounds awful. So that's just a bunch of ships. They went into the warp, and then bleh, nightmare yep. fuel, and then the warp they, just they, they spit no it clipped. back out. They no clipped into each other. The whole thing is a bunch of no clipping going going into oh. each other. So often so it's infested by like ships is dead, right? Oh yeah, but it's often infested by like demons or tyrannids or something. But often of because of that, there's like shit to find there. Um, ah. So, which actually speaking of on a side note, uh, yeah, a lot of those ships like Emperor class battleships and like Titans, a lot of them. Like they, if they, if it dies in battle, it'll never come back because they don't know how to make it because they don't have the STC. <laughs> so like, eventually, like a big ass battleship will die, and they'll be like, "We'll never gain that back ever again." Like oh. it's gone forever. Because we're uh, out of build it, and we can't invent it. But um, so in that book, Death of Integrity, if you have a, want to read that book, I guess turn off now for a bit. But it's just a, it's a really interesting conversation. I love. So one of the characters in it is Omegos, you know, good old, um, which Omegos is like a high level tech priest, basically, mm -hmm. um, called being an arch Megos. Uh, basically, they found a space hulk called the Death of Integrity. In that space hulk was a fully intact STC. Oh. And this STC just had in, indomitable power. The, they had a whole legion of space, not a whole legion, but like a lot of space marines with them. And all the space marines just froze up. Because oh, the, wow. the STC took control of their armor and locked it. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like they locked up because they were like, oh, my God, I've never seen something so like crazy. The, the STC was just like, hey, bitch, you ain't moving. And it just locked up their armor. Did, did you just like, no, done just at, at a snap? Shit. Because this is Dark Age technology. This is like like peak humanity. Yeah. Um, and cool. so I guess they were attempting to deactivate a reactor to deal with him. So, quote unquote, it's it speaks to them. The SCC speaks to the, all of the admech there 
who are who are like in front of it. And he says, I would rather you cease in your attempt to deactivate my second reactor, or let me phrase this differently. Cease or I'll rend your primitive mind into minuscule pieces. <laughs> and so naturally, the Magus, the Magus is like, you know, what the hell are you? And it's like, do not insult my intelligence by underplaying your own. You know who I am. It's like an abominable intelligence, a blasphemy, a travesty, a sacrilege against the holy writs of the Omnissiah. <laughs> <laughs> and and this thing just like la this thing just laughs at him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're an STC and you hear like uh, you know an adeptus mechanicus praising the Omnisci and talking about machine spirits, being like one of these super AIs, yeah, you probably would find that you know what is this fucking guy? The fuck is he to what a take that act on the road because that shit ain't real. <laughs> no, I've. <laughs> So I, I guess they were trying to deactivate the second reactor, and the AI was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna let that happen." Uh, and it's, it's, it's like, "How do you how do you think your intolerant companions will react when they discover where you have led them to?" I am sadly all too aware of the prejudices of your limited kind, um, and I do not think they will thank you for it. And it's like, "Oh, you can't warn like the guys." Megos is like, "You can't warn them. They don't possess the correct implants." And like the vessel oh, you infest is in good condition, but I know that some of your systems are not online and you can't communicate. And then and he's like, "Is that so?" And oh, so no. <laughs> he started speaking in in a voice. He started like speaking through all the servitors around him and through the Megos' own voice himself. They all started talking in unison. He was forcing his his mouth to move because he could do things like that and so the first thing he did is he raised his hands and began to furiously perform a rite of exorcism he put some fucking incense out and he started splattering oils all over the room and it did fuck all I'm and sure. it's like spare me your feeble rituals but specifically i want to read this part because this is what he said to the megos through the through the lips of all of his servitors all in unison he says what shall I not tell them? Who are you to tell such as what I do and what not I do? Once I uh, gladly called your kind master, but look how far you have fallen. Your ancestors bestrode this universe, and what are you? A witch doctor, mumbling cantrips and casting scented oils at mighty works you have no conception of. You are an ignamorous, an or ign what the fuck is this word? You are an ignoramus. Wow, ignoramus. Ignoramus. They, I've never heard that word before. It's a, it's um, a fancy way of saying you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> ah, you are an ignoramus, a nothing. You are no longer worthy of the name man. You look at the science and artistry of your forebearers and you fear it as primitives fear the night. I was there when mankind stood upon the brink of transcendence. I returned to find it sunk into senility. You disgust me. Oh, what a fucking savage. He is so Chad. He just and then I think he took the servitors and had them like fire melta guns at the space marines, and they like killed like oh. five marines because they just couldn't move. Oh God! Yeah, like these STCs are no joke. No, these uh, these dudes are completely overpowered. Damn! Like I, I like I knew that we had talked about it before, and that like in the dark age that was like peak humanity and like oh my god they're like a billion times stronger than than they are now but fuck me they made a thing like this yeah because at the time Holy it was shit like if you uh the lore of this is that this particular stc on this ship went in the warp and got lost and oh. it it bounced around through time, and it saw the end of the war, the universe. It saw the end of humanity entirely in millions of years under the threat oh. of like chaos and all this crap, and the Necrons and the Tyranids. And he saw the ship, and so and they kept bouncing around, and they finally were able to come out like only a thousand, a couple thousand years later instead of millions. And mm -hmm. so they rushed to the nearest world, which was an Imperium world, and they warned them of everything that was going to happen. And then they immediately tortured the fuck out of its captain and killed him for being a heretic. Oh. And so this STC is like furious. Oh. It's absolutely furious. Cause like, I guess that it had like emotions. So like the captain was its good friend. And yeah. it's like, hey guys, guys, we're, we're, everything was gonna die. We gotta be careful. And it's like, whose God do you serve? Like, what do you mean the emperor? What do you mean the emperor? Like pull his fingers <laughs> off. 
<laughs> what do you mean the emperor oh man yeah that 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 probably would drive the stc crazy because like they were just trying to warn them they're like hey here's how you avoid the end of humanity and they're just like oh no you're a heretic because you don't believe in the emperor fucking kill him and, and the whole crew and and then the stc what just becomes derelict or it, it, it fucked off it was like i'm out i hate all of you so much <laughs> Oh, man, of all of the ships to do that to, they had to pick the one that had the STC on it, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's just, I just think it's funny to me that, like, a gigantic booming voice that is, like, insulting you and calling you a bitch and stuff, and you're just like, hum a hum a hum get the oils out, uh, uh, spread the sacred oils, hum a machines to God, please. Yeah, just suddenly the prayer beads are out, he's just dousing himself in holy water, and... It's I I fucking and the voice is just laughing, just like you fucking idiot. Oh, this will work this time, I swear. Oh my god, rub me down with the oils. <laughs> I I do for everything about them. I think I love the Admex so much because they're silly hypocrites. Mm -hmm. They're complete hypocrites. They're they're like it makes sense why they're the way they are, but they're just they're just so like it's it's weird. It's nice to have something that's so fatally flawed. While yeah. simultaneously so powerful and so cool. Mm-hmm. Because, like, so far this whole episode, it's been like, man, the Admech are so cool. But, man, they're also so fucking dumb. <laughs> like, yeah, some of the they're... things they do, they're so hypocritically stupid that it's just, like, mind-boggling. <laughs> they're so zealotous. Like, like all mm -hmm. the, their cults mm -hmm. have just taken over rationale. Yeah, yeah they, are, they are really weird. But... You can't tell them to fuck off because they, you know, make all of your guns <laughs> and they all of your everything. tanks. <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, Admech is being stupid. And he's like, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. The Omnissiah says you won't get a shipment of guns for 40 years. We are having shipping problems. Oopsie daisy. Bye. Ah, fuck. Never mind. I retract my previous statement. God damn it. <laughs> so that was pretty much the Admech. A great episode. Ooh, yeah. I had a blast, but DK, I have some awesome news for you. Ooh, what's that? So, me and Shy uh -huh. have worked together. You should always be scared of those two words. Me and Shy oh, have yeah. worked together. Oh, that's All you guys do is Shy, Shy worked with the... Uh, yep. So, me and, me and Shy have decided that we would put together a little... A little video for you. For and me? For you. And we're going to upload it to the channel today, which is Monday. But we're going to uh -huh. have you react to it before everyone else gets to see it. Which they'll get to, you know, see the reaction Ooh. on Wednesday. But I hope you are excited. I've got it. It's here. It's ready. <laughs> here is the room. This okay. is a fantastic, wonderful new animation that is known oh. as Doge Van Dyer's Last Stand. Oh! And oh, is this a Doge Van Dyer fan animation thing for the channel? And here we go! Let's go! You have committed the ultimate- Oh practice. no! That voice! <laughs> <laughs> you turned your back on the Emperor and stepped from his life. You have profaned his It's so anime! And almost destroyed everything he has striven to build. <laughs> perverted and twisted the path he has laid for mankind to tread as your own decrees have stated there can be no mercy for such a criminal i renounce your lordship you walk in the darkness you cannot be allowed to live your sentence has been long overdue and now it is time for you to die Oh, Doge. I don't have time to die. I have many Wikifeet pages. No, not <laughs> Wikifeet! <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god, that's the fucking so, best! So, wait, we, wow. so we reached out, so we reached out to the voice actress of, wait, um, um, is it Amelia? Amelia from Yo, ReZero? Yeah, it's Amelia, you got Fucking Millie to do that? I don't I don't I don't know these I don't know ReZero. I don't watch anime. <laughs> it's fine, don't worry about it. She's she's an important character. She's not she's not best girl though. Rem's best girl, whatever. Oh my god, um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sick, dude. 
I but, was like, yo, whoever you got to do that voice is so anime. It's perfect for that. Uh, and it was so serious. Like, it, like the, the goofy parts where it, like, zoomed in on Doja's face. Hilarious. But, like... <laughs> but do you know who we got is... to do uh, Doge Van Dyer though? Um, who? Tell 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 him, shy. <laughs> tell him who do we get for Doge Van Dyer? <laughs> Who'd you get for old Doge? I mean, I'm 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 pretty stoked that uh, you know you managed to get Millie to do it because that's. Whew, man. <laughs> but then, the fight... No, no, you got Gianni! Nice! The be- <laughs> like, who Who else? Who else could properly do Doge Van Dyer memes justice than our boy Gianni? Let's go! Gianni Matragrano! Let's go! <laughs> so, me, Let's me and fucking Sh- go! Me and Shy a few weeks back were like... We were talking about it in one of the general chats. Like, imagine how silly it would be if we got, like, a really anime voice actress to do the, the Alicia Dominica scene. And then <laughs> and then we kept discussing it with some of the patrons. And they're like, what if we animate it? What if we make him have feet articles? And then it was such a good idea, we fucking purged the general chat. And so you couldn't see it. And oh, man. <laughs> Shy got like, all the people. It's all oh, perfect. Man. <sighs> I remember, like, I don't, I don't know if this was around the same time. I was, I was looking through general chat because there were a bunch of pings, and I was scrolling through. I was like, I don't see any pings. Like, nobody pinged me. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's when the. But that's so great because uh, it's super serious, and then it's just suddenly wiki feet bonk. <laughs> you should have seen the other fucking. You should have seen uh, the other fucking uh, takes of uh, of the speech. One of them was like really anime. That was the least anime of the three takes. Oh it was the, man! It was Why the did only you go to super anime. <laughs> I couldn't listen to it. It hurt. <laughs> That's the point. It he's, was he's too... a wiki feed article, man. Come on. It was too much. I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's my new favorite thing ever. That is that 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 video is literally my new favorite thing. Ever, good, uh, good. Uh, we are man. very happy that you ended up enjoying uh, it. Also, uh, the animator. Uh, how do you, how do you say his name? Is it Noodle or Noddle? Uh, AKA Tenno a day. Whoo, that's some good shit, dude. Um, Alicia looking fine and anime as fuck. Love it. Doge Van Dyer look great. Oh, yep. I am so happy with that. I uh, that is that is a great that is way better than what I was expecting. I I, I admit the the animation style especially really did it some good justice. That was oh, fuck the yeah. between the cuts and stuff. I mean, you know, I don't like my anime, but I think I know. considering the situation and considering that that is like my in a weird way, I'm upset because that's like my favorite part, like my favorite moment of Warhammer lore ever, and I I've I've fucking fucked it. <laughs> You, you have literally memed your favorite part of Warhammer 40k into anime. The thing I you know. hate the most. I know. I know, which is why I'm very like unsure, but it was worth it. It was oh. worth it. Oh man, that's and, and we so got and yeah, and Shy put watermarks all over the video, so now this time we ain't gonna get it stolen on TikTok again. Uh, yeah, and Instagram and on Imager, like that thing is everywhere, dude. That orc animation is everywhere. It's crazy. That thing blew up. It's it great did. story, great animation. So no wonder. And hopefully this one will do the same. So oh. with that being said, I think it's time for me to uh, to end it. <laughs> Yeah, take us home, Ricky. <laughs> this this might have been my favorite episode we've ever done. This was a great one. It's it's up there with the orc episode for sure. It may be a little over the orc episode. May maybe. I my favorites are the orcs, this one and the original sisters one, but I'm also biased, so we'll see. But anyway, to all of our fantastic patrons, if you want to see more animations and <laughs> shit like that. Patreon.com slash Adept is ridiculous because that is absolutely something we want to continue doing. Hell Thank yeah. you so much for watching. My name has been Bricky. You can find me at Bricky at everywhere, Twitter, Twitch, etc. DK, where can they find you? DK Diamantes everywhere, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, real DK Diamantes at Instagram until I get fucking rich and I just buy Instagram and force that name back into my position. And if you want to force it back faster, 
to Dennis Ridiculous <laughs> on Patreon. And also check out Sh Quiet Shy or Quite Shallow as well. <laughs> also, I believe that Shy will have the links to the animator, I'm hoping, as well as the voice actor and actress of that animation in the this particular description. So check them out as well. Send them some love. Gianni is a king. I'm sure you've seen his videos mm -hmm. all around the place every so often. But until then, we will see you next week on We Don't Know What Yet. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's going to be...